Hi, I'm Davey. I I'm here uh, to talk to you a little bit about how to build a successful uh, design delivery process uh, while building a design system. Uh, I've spun up a team of uh, federated uh, platform leads and design system practitioners, expert in crafts and deliverables uh, as a part of uh, being on the design systems team for uh, Disney streaming. And uh, we found um, extreme success being able to really break down the communication barriers uh, between design and engineering by being uh, brought up under uh, design ops and under um, our former leader, uh, Bailey Brenner uh, Brezius, who is also uh, presenting here uh, at UXCX. I have a, a deep interest in uh, podcasting and uh, being out in the design systems community. So uh, earlier this year, uh, my uh, colleague, uh, former colleague, uh, PJ Onori and I had started a design system uh, office hours podcast and uh, really taking the uh, the sentiment and the uh, excitement of our office hour practices and having a, a spirited conversation between uh, two design system uh, practitioners about how we scale design systems in, a, in our uh, separate company. So uh, myself as a uh, Disney streaming and PJ uh, from Pinterest. So there's uh, always gonna be two new points of view and uh, we're here really to discuss things um, all the way from uh, design management to tasks, uh, task management, JIRA, uh, and also um, the, the elusive uh, Figma is not a design system, which is our uh, episode five. So Dizzy Streaming uh, Design System really supports uh, primarily uh, Dizzy Plus, uh, Hulu, and Star Plus. And these are the product teams that, that we work with uh, day to day. There's approximately about uh, 60 designers and about eight uh, design system uh, folks that uh, support this. And we've had the distinct pleasure of really working on this uh, growing multi-brand, multi-platform design system. And when we talk about multi-platform, the, the very uh, most unique one that uh, you may see here is the television and, ga and game console. So we support uh, web, responsive web, uh, mobile and tablet, and a, a wide array of uh, television platforms. So our, our product design goal is to reach as many Disney fanatics a, as possible, uh, no matter what device you're on, whether you're on a, you know, a very high power gaming console uh, to your um, Chromecast and your, you know, Fire and Roku stick. So uh, we're really trying to design for, for everyone in um, all, all locales. So in 20, uh, 2020, uh, we really uh, took the effort to take a 100,000 foot view. So arbitrary number here, uh, but really uh, looking across how might we design uh, design system patterns across various brands that um, are under our uh, portfolio. So uh, we took this time to form uh, a horizontal uh, design team supporting uh, all of our brands and our designers uh, on all of these brands are able to design across multiple platforms at once. And what, what we're looking to do as design system folks is really encourage patterns to be brought over uh, not only across platforms, but across other brands. So uh, a perfect example would be if you're designing something for Disney Plus, we really encourage you to talk to your Hulu partner and see if, if there's a need for this pattern uh, to really uh, extend this uh, beyond and uh, as far as we can. So growing the team, we did have limitations of design systems being under uh, originally only under Disney Plus. So that was our uh, support model. And we don't have uh, embedded engineers uh, on our teams and how we're really set up um, in, in that platform chart previously, engineering has their own distinct uh, client engineering platform teams. And what we really tried to do as a platform leads in, in this federated world was we would just really work with our engineers in a very uh, pair programming, pair design uh, sort of way. And uh, previously uh, we would start with one designer uh, per uh, screen size. So like I was a web platform lead. Uh, we had a, a mobile platform lead and a living room platform lead. And uh, amongst our, our platform expertise, uh, we really tried to pair as much as we can on our own and really build those relationships when we were in a, a federated model. And uh, the really, the key point here is that you could, you could really start uh, no matter what maturity level you're in. 
so this is a very typical uh, product design story. So um, in the times where we, we were federated and we were only really working with engineering um, later in the process, uh, designers really like to work at their own pace. So they, they fill time uh, that that's a lot to them. So a lot of, a lot of uh, the design decisions by the time the discussions make it to uh, our engineering partners were already, you know, more or less made. And uh, we've already biased ourselves in uh, specific design solutions. And one of the major things that we've seen uh, when we don't have, you know, pods or squads is that uh, when design de development teams um, don't uh, sit with each other, um, there's, there's really a little bit more of a disconnect because there's not um, this continuous uh, conversations happening. And what, what really occurs then is designers then, you know, bundle this work as a, you know, as a gift from above, uh, so to speak, uh, to deliver uh, to engineering uh, at the end of the process. And this is really what it felt like for uh, a lot of, a lot of us working in design systems uh, is that there's this, this is a real, uh, you know, truck and, um, no, no kidding. It felt like uh, this truck uh, was going to be backing up, beeping, and uh, you know, about to give us all of this, all of this work. And um, the traditional handoff as silo teams is not uh, agile as much as we like to think. And even if the product teams and the design teams follow these agile processes and plan the work in this way, if they're really holding the work. Um, to be handed off all at once at the, you know, at the end of the process, it really negates um, the agile process. Another thing just to, just to note, um, especially for people that are new uh, coming into teams is that any process that has worked in the past um, can, can always be challenged and can always be improved. So don't, don't be afraid to ask, uh, you know, product and engineering, um, you know, what might make this process better. So the main problem that we're that we're looking to solve is that uh, Dizzy Plus product design teams and platform engineering teams uh, do not work with each other uh, on on a regular basis. So the there is this disjointed process that we've seen that there's really more of a collaboration between uh, product managers and design, uh, and design systems was a, a little left out, and then engineering was a, a little left out. I like to think about sort of wireframes and sketches like this, like this beautiful one of this cake on the left. So um, we, we're very, I think, uh, used to um, designing uh, as designers something on the on the right. So we we like to build uh, something as beautiful as possible. And what is like in, in our vision? So this uh, beautiful Gaudi cake is you know the final output. But what we really want to uh, promote is doing some more low fit all the explorations and, and being able to uh, be comfortable with talking to engineering when there's something just like a, a sketch that has annotations and, you know, a, a distinct point of view. So uh, while the fidelity of the picture on the, the left may not be to your liking, we could develop requirements against this. And it, it certainly is enough uh, to really spearhead a conversation with, you know, engineering and, the design systems team is, you know, here to facilitate this and here to get you um, a better starting point. And we're here to help and, in, in, you know, invite everyone to come co-work with us. So our product design life cycle is very similar to the, the double diamond uh, cycle where there's three distinct uh, tracks or not tracks, but three distinct uh, phases uh, of the work. So there's explore and define. Uh, refine and and deliver and uh, as you see uh, it's three phases of work that are that are linear and waterfall uh, it we may not think of it being that way when when we're in it but there's a explicit gates at the bottom of these first two phases uh, for exec approval that really drive us uh, going to the next phase so uh, here uh, product and and design are represented in this blue and uh, butterscotch but uh, for the most part, in the first two phases, product and design are working uh, extremely iteratively as they go through product requirements and iterate on them. And there's a gate uh, at the bottom of the explore and define for exec approval. Through refinement, uh, there's another gate at the bottom that 
denotes a go or no go from from execs. And once we get to the delivery phase, historically, that's when uh, you see the pink and green, which is a design system and engineering groups uh, really getting getting involved in, in earnest. And at this point, you see that designers are refining their final design solution. And in, in the past, that's when they tapped our team to help build uh, these uh, cross-platform deliverables. Uh, this would then feed into engineering intake, and then this would feed into the build process. So this is what the old way sort of looked like. So designers would work, uh, uh, you know, autonomously on their own for what seemed like it, it could be, um, you know, multiple sprints of two weeks. Uh, usually it's uh, for, for a few months. And at the final uh, spike to deliver this, they, they tap us on the shoulder and really uh, need our help to push the delivery forward. And uh, that that was the old way uh, with the the barf emoji there. And what we're really looking to improve on is this iterous, uh, 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 continuous uh, design cycle and uh, working with design to not only intake their their requests on um, our variants on our component library, but working continuously with them as they're working through the discovery process to really work in parallel and attempt to follow along and, and build alongside with them. So the reason we're doing this now was post-launch. Uh, so we launched Disney Plus in 2019. Uh, we really wanted to take a break from really sprinting and sprinting to the finish line to get this uh, app to market and look at how we can audit and scale you know, our component libraries and our uh, design system you know, further and even expand on, on adoption. So our pilot that we wanted to intake was we were looking to develop a, a application star plus uh, that was our, a Latin American version, uh, more or less of, you know, the Disney plus app. So we, we rebuilt a, a new application for the Latin American market had, you know, um, similar, similar content, uh, um, even more licensed like sports content, but it was built on the bones uh, of Disney Plus. Uh, the, the goal was that we needed to build this application with a different brand voice. So we really took this uh, opportunity to promote two distinct working groups. So that product and design working group and design and engineering um, pairing together. <clears throat> So you see these two parallel tracks that we were looking to promote. So design and product are going to be working together in lockstep. The difference in this approach versus the previous approach was that we we're interjecting our design system practitioners and engineering and weaving it through different parts of the process. So as product uh, finalizes their requirements, we are there with design to really help them triage pull whatever templates are available and really get them to the best starting point as possible. And <coughs> the engineering uh, cross-functional piece also is being able to pull that earlier on into the process. So as, as soon as uh, designers are able to build uh, a starting point um, with our, or with our components, really get early cross-functional feedback um, from engineering and really de-risk um, not showing them something until the end of the line. And we've, we've done very good at, I think, um, establishing these lighter weight uh, cross-functional share outs. So that they're very similar to um, the office hours that design system team runs. And what we, what we try to do is uh, sort of uh, facilitate this discussion with uh, design ICs and engineering ICs and really have this uh, open door office hours uh, process where we, we set aside um, half an hour chunks of time uh, on, a, on a weekly basis and have designers that are ready to show work to engineering, just really show and get early feedback. So we're really trying to connect the dots as, as is hub and spoke. So as design system team working on design delivery, we've been the single point of contact for design deliverables. And that really put us in a good, uh, good faith uh, position with engineering to really partner and grow 
and really spread the, you know, the, the gospel, so to speak of working in, in this really collaborative fashion. And we're, we're able to, you know, connect designers together uh, to engineers and really, you know, break down the barriers of our traditional handoff process. And it's, it becomes building with design, uh, design system building with design and utilizing uh, their contributions and, you know, and their feedback to really build back into the system via uh, components and templates. And we want designers to feel okay and uh, to feel safe uh, and create this culture where uh, sharing work that is not finished is okay. And uh, previously there was this philosophy, I think from the, a lot of the engineering leads that uh, we really wanted to guard uh, the engineering team's time. We don't want engineers to work on anything that was not, you know, uh, fully baked and, and, and finished. And if, if we continue with that philosophy and work in such a way, teammates across uh, functions will, will never really get to partner with each other. We hear this phrase a lot. Uh, I work with engineering by getting them involved early and often. Uh, and I always like to ask, like, do, do you, and, uh, and, you know, in, in earnest, uh, this typically means that you're not working with engineering in a, a continuous fashion. We, we get a lot of this also with hearing, oh, you got to work with the design system team early and often. So I, I have that same point of view on that. And, you know, while we don't have pods or true cross-functional teams, uh, we, you know, we really strive to have all partners in meetings as, uh, as soon as uh, we're ready to really get, get early feedback. And we should so solicit imp implementation feedback from engineers versus dictating how design thinks something should be built. So really good value uh, that we really like to leverage and, and look to and uh, continue to look to on a regular basis while we're working is that we want to empower product teams across all brands to build from and for our design system. So this means uh, distinctively uh, being brand agnostic first for flexibility. So uh, previously I mentioned uh, the example of if you're building something for Disney Plus, let's talk to a Hulu counterpart to see if um, they wanted to utilize that component. So that, that is, uh, the, this di distinct example to tie back to this value. And that means that we're not, uh, brand forced and, um, you know, with the idea of limited scalability. So not, uh, we're, we're no longer trying to design patterns that are only for one specific brand. This also means that we, we get to, you know, jump into fun of uh, design tokens and expressing brand voice through these foundational tokens. So I will talk a little bit more about that in, in, a, in a few slides, uh, but that means that we're designing a framework that works across branding and can be extended to accept even more brands. And this does not mean that we're working on subsystems that are um, different from each other. One of the major outputs that we had was this, uh, we have a, this uh, front end and a design Jedi council meeting that um, we've, we've gotten together with the uh, engineering management and we really formed this to just have a weekly uh, cadence to discuss a design systems work with uh, engineering. And uh, I had started this with another uh, design manager a, a year and a half ago. And this is really includes um, designers on uh, the design system team and then platform engineering leads from each team to design uh, design and work in uh, this cross-functional way. And we were able to talk a lot about uh, theming and reuse of type ramp across apps, which really led to uh, us speeding up the, the engineering uh, sort of a timeline for uh, Star Plus. We talked about unifying a color ramp um, across uh, all of our brands and platforms. And we continue to utilize this group also to talk about this, uh, how, how are things working from the artifacts that they're receiving? Um, can we reduce the design delivery artifacts and how might we make this uh, easier for engineering to consume? And one of the major uh, improvements to this uh, was uh, as we open this up to uh, individual contributors, we, we've been bringing them in uh, as needed and uh, they've been able to de-risk a lot of the work by getting ahead and getting a potential very early feedback on implementation uh, details and really um, 
allowing us to take a further look ahead so we don't um, have to revisit large chunks of work uh, further in the process. So it's this continuous design and development. So we've sort of uh, in, in, our, in our own uh, you know, ecosystem formed this meta agile work stream with, uh, with designers and also with engineers. And we're unblocking work uh, as early as we can by delivering smaller chunks of work as well. So um, the support model does take uh, a bit of commitment. So um, from a designer and uh, feature, uh, feature designer uh, point of view, design systems and feature designer point of view, there's pro probably about two to four hours a week from members of the design systems team just to meet with uh, feature designers to uh, continue to uh, educate people about how to utilize uh, the design system, how to build in this uh, component fashion, and really uh, how to extend your work as, as far as you can. And we've had also great success just having these asynchronous conversations also in, in Slack by having a, a support channel that we're really able to uh, triage uh, requests uh, as, as soon as they come up. And any, any designer on our team uh, has been uh, you know, very open about answering uh, support questions uh, you know, as quick as possible. And it's really created a, a very good relationship between design system designers and uh, feature designers. So a little bit about uh, design tokens and the foundational tokens that uh, have been very successful. So we dove deep into uh, supporting design tokens just for uh, typography, which includes like type size, line height, letter spacing, uh, brand colors and utility colors and spacing in, in general. So the, the first two have uh, immediately paid dividends, uh, you know, Disney and, and, Star Plus are two brands that live in separate locales. Uh, Disney Plus has launched in many different languages and including uh, in Asian Pacific uh, where we needed to introduce new typefaces. And because of the, the type alignment work that we've done with typography tokens, we were able to extend to support four new uh, non-Latin typefaces. So a lot of the work that we're doing early on to think about the future has been uh, paying off, you know, uh, very, very quickly. So there's a notion on the design systems team to, you know, work smarter, uh, not harder. Um, we used to in sketch many, many, many uh, moons ago, uh, do a lot of head hand redlining. And uh, we, we had assumed that our engineering partners really preferred uh, to look at stuff this way. And with Figma and with Zeppelin and uh, they're, they're, they're already, uh, you know, ability to really do inspection where, where you don't need this, this sort of thing. And one of the major outcomes uh, for Star Plus also is that we were looking to deliver in, in a smarter fashion. So deliver things in uh, much smaller and discrete chunks versus this large delivery of, of assets. And uh, this allowed us to focus on uh, what information that we wanted to convey, um, what what are the different deltas between uh, what may exist uh, in the past versus where where we are going to. And this was uh, uh, something uh, that that is really, really fun to look at in, in Zeppelin. So in Zeppelin, um, we're able to deliver uh, components and export uh, components as we finish them. And as we export frames that include said component, you're able to see in Zeppelin where the dependencies are. And that, that was just a really powerful thing just to educate uh, engineers and designers about the idea of uh, reusable components as well. So we have sort of uh, really gone through and uh, tried to look at the uh, atomic design model from Brad Foss and really tried to leverage a lot more work on the templates uh, and then also uh, handing over like organisms. So a, a great example of what this, what this looks like is this is a, a page template for uh, Star Plus details. And there's a lot of similarities between the details pages in, in general. So that they, they all include a background, a dimming scrim. Uh, number one, they include a uh, background image uh, that is tied to the asset. And then number three is just the details uh, metadata block. That is a unique um, 
a difference between all of these different detail pages. So uh, we've found from uh, speaking and workshopping this with engineering that we really only need to deliver one base template and then all the different variants of what that metadata block looks like. So this delivery looks vastly different than uh, what it used to look like, which is um, we used to deliver screens with all these different different states. So future proofing and looking towards uh, what's next, uh, we're, we're surveying uh, designers to, un to understand how, how we could better help them deliver specs. Uh, we've also included um, engineering in, the, in, in this uh, survey to understand how, how our um, delivery uh, artifacts are being uh, consumed. Uh, do we have adequate coverage for templates? And then how easy is the, the system to use? So uh, we've also uh, established a, a cadence of uh, communicating our releases and versioning and, and then referencing uh, documentation on how uh, and when uh, different components are changing via like a, a release log and a change log. So uh, if you do take anything away from, uh, you know, uh, from this, this is uh, the end of the movie here. Um, Meta Agile work streams work very well uh, for designers and working together and design and engineering. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help from the design systems team. We're here to help you get started. Uh, design systems team could also help you uh, facilitate better uh, design engineering partnerships and try to deliver in smaller discrete chunks. So no a piece uh, of, a, of, a, of a component or a sub component or any piece of design is too small to, you know, engage someone uh, in a conversation with. So I'm Davey. Um, you could follow me uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can visit my link tree and the link to the podcast is there. Uh, it's been a honor and a pleasure. Thank you.